Imagine this, you build an engine so ridiculously fast that it doesn't just break lap records, it breaks the entire sport. I'm talking about an engine so dominant that racing officials had nightmares about it, so powerful that it literally rewrote the laws of physics on four wheels, and so dangerous that the FIA looked at it and said, yeah, that's a hard no from us, chief. This isn't science fiction. This is the true story of the BMW M1213, the engine that was literally too good to exist. And by the end of this video, you'll understand why sometimes being the best that something can get you completely canceled. We're diving deep into the turbocharged terror that dominated Formula One in the 1980s with such ruthless efficiency that it got an entire engine technology banned from the sport forever. But here's the kicker. This story starts with what was essentially a grocery store parking lot engine that some absolute madmen decided to feed steroids and rocket fuel. And trust me, when I say rocket fuel, I mean that literally. So buckle up, because we're about to explore how a humble 1.5 liter four cylinder became the automotive equivalent of a nuclear weapon on wheels. Let's rewind to 1961 when BMW created the M10 engine, a cute little 1.5 liter four cylinder that was about as exciting as watching paint dry on a rainy Tuesday. This engine was designed for economy cars, the kind of vehicle your accountant would drive to save money on gas. It made a whopping 75 horsepower, which in today's terms is less power than most lawnmowers. But here's where BMW's engineers proved they had either genius level creativity or a complete death wish. They looked at this boring little engine and thought, what if we strapped a turbocharger to this thing and fed it fuel that's one step away from rocket propulsion? The result was the M1213, and calling it an upgrade is like calling the atomic bomb a minor improvement over regular explosives. These engineers took a motor that was designed to sip fuel and commute to work and turned it into a fire-breathing dragon that consumed exotic fuel cocktails like a college student at an all-you-can-drink buffet. But wait, turning a grocery getter into a race engine was just the appetizer. The main course was about to make every other engine manufacturer question their life choices. Hold on to your seats, because this is where things get absolutely bonkers. This tiny 1.5 liter engine, and I cannot stress enough how small that is, was producing over 1400 horsepower in qualifying trim. Let me put that in perspective for you. That's more power per liter than a Bugatti Chiron, McLaren P1, and Koenigsegg Regera combined. We're talking about 933 horsepower per liter, which makes modern supercars look like they're powered by hamster wheels. To understand how insane this is, imagine if your smartphone could suddenly process data faster than NASA's supercomputers. That's essentially what BMW did. They took a compact engine and made it more powerful than engines three times its size. The McLaren MP44 with this engine could accelerate so violently that it would pin drivers to their seats harder than a NASA rocket launch. It was like strapping a jet engine to a go-kart and wondering why physics started crying. The power-to-weight ratio was so extreme that these cars didn't just accelerate, they teleported. Zero to 60 miles per hour happened faster than you could sneeze, and the acceleration continued building until either the driver ran out of track or the engine decided to spontaneously disassemble itself in a spectacular fireworks display. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so it made crazy power. Big deal. But here's where the story takes a turn that would make chemists everywhere reach for their safety goggles. These engines weren't just running on premium gasoline, they were running on what can only be described as barely controlled chemical warfare. The fuel mixture contained toluene, which is so volatile that it's literally used in explosives and rocket propellant. Teams were essentially mixing cocktails that would make a bomb squad nervous. We're talking about fuel that was more exotic than anything you'd find in a chemistry lab, with octane ratings that would make racing fuel look like apple juice. The BMW M12-13 could burn through this nuclear cocktail so efficiently, that it was essentially creating controlled explosions 10,000 times per minute. It was like feeding a dragon a steady diet of napalm and wondering why everything around it caught fire. The fuel was so specialized that teams had to have their own chemists on payroll just to make sure they weren't accidentally creating weapons-grade materials. But here's the really crazy part. This fuel was so corrosive and aggressive that it would eat through fuel lines like acid. Teams were constantly replacing fuel system components because the fuel itself was trying to escape and find something less dangerous dangerous to do, like maybe power a space shuttle. The fuel tanks had to be specially lined with materials that could withstand what was essentially liquid aggression. But the real kicker? This engine was so powerful that it started breaking things that weren't even supposed to be breakable. 
The BMW M1213 was producing so much power that it was literally destroying the cars it was mounted in. We're talking about engines that could generate enough torque to twist a steel chassis like a pretzel. The vibrations were so intense that they would shake loose components that were welded in place. It was like trying to contain a controlled earthquake in a tin can while traveling at 200 miles per hour. Teams had to completely redesign their chassis just to handle the power, and even then, cars would sometimes fall apart mid-race, not from crashes, but from their own engines being too violent. The engine mounts had to be reinforced with materials typically used in bridge construction. The transmission had to be built like a bag vault just to survive the power delivery. But here's where it gets really wild. The engine was so powerful that it was actually flexing the entire car. The chassis would twist and bend under the force, which meant that the aerodynamics would change mid-corner as the car literally reshaped itself. It was like having a race car that was also a shapeshifter, except instead of being cool, it was terrifying. The suspension components were under so much stress that they would fatigue and fail in ways that engineers had never seen before. It wasn't just that parts were breaking, they were breaking in new and creative ways that defied everything mechanical engineers thought they knew about material science. But speaking of terrifying, wait until you hear about what happened when they actually tried to race these mechanical monsters. From 1983 to 1986, this engine didn't just win races, it obliterated the competition so thoroughly that other teams started wondering if they were even playing the same sport. We're talking about a level of dominance that made other manufacturers consider switching to entirely different industries. The BMW-powered cars were lapping the field so consistently that race organizers started worrying about viewer retention, because watching a complete massacre gets boring after a while. Nelson PK won the 1983 championship, and it wasn't even close. The engine was so far ahead of everything else that other manufacturers were basically competing for second place, and they knew it. It was like bringing a fighter jet to a horse race, except the horse race was Formula One and the fighter jet was street legal. The qualifying sessions became a joke because everyone knew the BMW engines would be at the front. Other teams would show up just to see how badly they were going to lose. It was automotive humiliation on a global scale broadcast to millions of people who were watching one team essentially play a video game on easy mode while everyone else was stuck on expert difficulty. Race after race, the BMW engines would disappear into the distance while the naturally aspirated engines were left wondering if they were even moving forward. The gap between first and second place became so large that they could have fit an entire shopping mall between the leader and the rest of the field. But here's where things get really interesting, because all that power came with a price that nobody saw coming. These engines had the lifespan of a mayfly with anxiety issues and a gambling addiction. In qualifying, they'd turn up the boost to insane levels and the engine would literally have a life expectancy measured in minutes. Teams would build multiple engines for a single race weekend because they knew they'd grenade at least half of them just during practice sessions. It was like having a relationship with a beautiful but psychotic partner. Amazing when it worked, catastrophic when it didn't. Drivers would literally pray to various automotive deities just to make it through a race without their engine deciding to become modern art in the form of scattered metal pieces across the track. The engines were so fragile that mechanics would rebuild them between sessions like they were handling explosive devices. The tolerances were so tight that a grain of sand could cause a catastrophic failure. Teams had clean rooms that would make NASA jealous just to keep their engines from spontaneously combusting. But here's the really insane part. The engines were so unreliable that teams would actually celebrate finishing a race more than winning it. Completing 50 laps without the engine exploding was considered a miracle worthy of champagne and probably a religious ceremony. But the real plot twist? The thing that made these engines truly terrifying wasn't just their power, it was how they delivered it. The turbo lag on these engines was so severe that drivers needed the reflexes of a caffeinated ninja just to keep them on the track. We're talking about engines that would go from, is this thing even running, to, oh god, why is everything moving so fast, in about 0.3 seconds. The power delivery was so violent and unpredictable that it was like trying to ride a mechanical bull that had been fed espresso and anger. Drivers described it as having two completely different cars, one that was boring and slow, and another that was actively trying to kill them. There was no middle ground, no gradual power increase, just a binary switch between grocery store parking lot and rocket ship to the moon. It was like having a light switch that controlled a nuclear reactor. 
The turbo lag was so extreme that drivers would have to anticipate corners several seconds in advance, hoping that the turbo would kick in at exactly the right moment. Get the timing wrong and you'd either be crawling through the corner like a tortoise or shooting out of it like a cannonball aimed at the nearest wall. Some drivers compared it to trying to control a wild animal that would randomly decide to sprint at full speed with no warning. The cars were essentially bipolar, completely docile one moment and then trying to achieve escape velocity the next. Now, you'd think that level of unpredictability would be enough to get attention, but the FIA wasn't done being terrified yet. These engines were producing so much power that they were literally outrunning the safety technology of the time. The cars were going so fast that the barriers, runoff areas, and safety equipment couldn't keep up. It was like bringing a machine gun to a pillow fight. Technically impressive, but ethically questionable and potentially lethal to everyone involved. Race organizers started having nightmares about what would happen if one of these missiles lost control at 200 plus miles per hour. The engines weren't just fast, they were existentially threatening to everyone within a 5 mile radius of the track. The cars were moving so quickly that human reaction time became irrelevant. By the time you saw something happening, it was already over. The safety barriers were designed for cars that were significantly slower. So when a BMW powered car hit them, it was like shooting a cannonball at a paper bag. The runoff areas that were considered safe suddenly became inadequate because these cars could cover distances that would make a cheetah jealous. Medical teams had to be retrained because the types of accidents these engines could cause were beyond anything they'd seen before. It wasn't just about speed anymore, it was about forces that human bodies weren't designed to survive. But here's the thing that really got under the FIA's skin, and it wasn't just about safety. The BMW M12-13 was so expensive to develop and maintain that it was literally pricing smaller teams out of existence. We're talking about engines that cost more to run for a season than most people spend on houses. The fuel alone was so exotic and expensive that teams were essentially burning money by the gallon. And not just any money, but the kind of money that could fund small countries. It created a two-tier system where you either had unlimited budgets and BMW engines, or you had regular budgets and were basically there for participation trophies. It was turning Formula 1 into a rich kids club where the admission fee was measured in millions and the monthly dues could bankrupt a small corporation. The development costs were so astronomical that only manufacturers with deep pockets could even attempt to compete. Smaller teams were forced to become mobile chicanes, essentially rolling roadblocks that existed only to get lapped by the BMW engines. The sport was becoming less about driver skill and more about who could afford the most expensive controlled explosions. Teams were spending more money on fuel for a single race weekend than some people make in a lifetime. The exotic fuel mixtures required specialized storage, handling, and transportation that made NASA's rocket fuel logistics look simple by comparison. And that brings us to the moment that changed everything, the decision that would end an era and save Formula One from itself. In 1989, the FIA had seen enough. They didn't just ban turbocharged engines, they obliterated the entire concept from Formula One like it was a nuclear weapons treaty. It wasn't a gradual phase out or a gentle transition, it was a full-scale nuclear ban that sent shockwaves through the entire motorsport world. The BMW M1213 and engines like it were deemed too dangerous, too expensive, and too dominant to continue existing. It was like the automotive equivalent of banning nuclear weapons. Once you've seen what they can do, you realize that maybe some some things are too powerful for their own good. The ban wasn't just about one engine, it was about preserving the sport itself from complete destruction. The decision effectively ended the turbo era and forced manufacturers to go back to naturally aspirated engines, which was like asking fighter pilots to go back to flying biplanes. It was a massive technological step backward that was absolutely necessary to keep the sport competitive, safe, and financially viable. The ban was so comprehensive that it didn't just affect Formula One, it sent ripples through all of motorsport. Other racing series looked at what happened in F1 and decided that maybe they didn't want to deal with engines that could accidentally achieve orbital velocity. So there you have it, the BMW M1213, the engine so fast, so powerful, and so downright terrifying that it got banned from the sport it was designed to dominate. This little 1.5 liter engine from a grocery getter became the stuff of legends, and then became the stuff of nightmares for racing officials worldwide. It's a reminder that sometimes innovation can be so revolutionary that it literally breaks the game and occasionally the game has to fight back. This engine represents the absolute peak of what's possible when engineers are given unlimited budgets and told to ignore common sense. It's a testament to human ingenuity and a cautionary tale about what happens when innovation meets reality at 200 miles per hour. 
What do you think? Should there be limits on automotive innovation or should we just let engineers go completely insane and see what happens? Are we better off with the safer, more controlled engines of today or do you miss the days when Formula One cars were essentially controlled explosions on wheels? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single one and love hearing your thoughts on automotive chaos. If you enjoyed this deep dive into automotive mayhem, smash that like button like it's a BMW turbo engine after five minutes of qualifying and subscribe for more stories about cars and engines that were too good for their own good. Trust me, we're just getting started with the wild world of banned automotive technology and the rabbit hole goes way deeper than you think. And speaking of things that were too good to be legal, next week we're diving into the story of a car that was faster than a Ferrari and totally illegal. A machine so outrageous that it makes today's story look tame. You're not gonna believe what happens when someone builds a car that's literally too fast for the streets. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss it because this next story is gonna blow your mind.